Hey guys, today we're doing the last part of this chapter 6 notes, so 6.4, proportional parts. Um, our objectives are you will be able to use proportional parts of triangles to solve problems, and students will use similar triangles to solve problems. Alright, so let's go ahead and go through this guided exploration. Consider the diagram below. Reminder, um, if two lines are parallel, then the corresponding angles are congruent. So remember, um, this means parallel. We have those two like dash lines right next to one another. So we have parallel lines here and here. So if we think about one of these lines being transversal, so let's say like this line here, these would be corresponding angles. So corresponding angles are congruent to one another. So it wants us to mark any congruent angles we have. Then if we take a look at this side, this can be considered as a transversal to my parallel lines. So those two are corresponding. And then of course, A equals A. So we can say that that angle is equal to itself. All right, and then we wanna know which triangles are similar in the diagram. So I can say that triangle ABE is going to be similar to triangle A, let's see, that's C, then D. Okay, because we have that smaller triangle at the top and then the larger triangle, which is the entire thing. And then we want to find the scale factor, small to big. So I'm going to go ahead and use my two parallel lines. Um, those lines are the bottom of my triangle. They're very easy to see, plus I already have them highlighted. So small to big, we'll do 12 over 20. And we can simplify that to 3 over 5. So there's our scale factor. Um, use a proportion to find the lengths of AD and AC. So AD is here, and AC will be on this side. Okay, so I can do 6 over AD, right? Let's go ahead and highlight some new sides. So if I have 6 here, and then I have AD all across here, which is the entire side of the larger triangle. So 6 over AD, and then I can go ahead and use 3 over 5. Because like that, that is similar to my 12 over 20, just simplified. Um, so I can go ahead and use that. It is my scale factor, so they should equal one another. So I now have 3AD is equal to 30. So AD equals 10. So that entire side here equals 10. All right, then we can go ahead and do that with the other side as well. I can do 9 all over AC. So if we highlight that one as well, we have our smaller triangle. Then we have a larger triangle. So 9 over AC is equal to 3 over 5. So once again, that's our scale factor. It has to equal that. So 3AC is equal to 45. Go ahead and divide by 3. And AC equals 15. All right, let's go ahead and um, get into this. So since we have these parallel lines, we are able to create those similar triangles. Um, even though they are inside one another, we still have these two similar triangles. And if you need to, you can always write them right next to each other. So I have my smaller triangle and then my larger triangle. You just need to make sure that you are labeling everything correctly. So I have A, B, B, and then A, D, C. And we had six. 12 and 9, and this was 20. And initially I was finding AD and AC. I know I found those, but here we are able to see what we have in common, and then I can mark every, remark all my angles that are congruent to one another. So I can really see, okay, what is congruent to what. But everything is already kind of set up where it needs to be. So 12 and 20 are in the same place, the AE and the AD, as well as the AB and the AC. But if you need to, you can split up those triangles so you can see very clearly, okay, this side is um, corresponding with this side, so you can create those proportions. All right, let's go ahead and try a couple of these. So example one here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with these parallel lines. So 4 and W, so I'm going to take the smaller triangle all over the larger triangle, then I want to do that with the sides. I have my small triangle and then my large triangle. 
So it's equal to 2 over 5. So I have 2w equals 20. So I'm going to cross this bottom. All right, and then w equals 10 once I divide by that 2. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at example 2. So once again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start with these parallel lines, 30 and 40. So 30 all over 40 should equal my small triangle over my large triangle. So A over 25. All right, and then remember that we have, so in this case, I'm going to use small and large. We have our small triangle at the top and our larger triangle down at the bottom. So we have the corresponding parts up and down, one triangle on top, the other triangle on the bottom. So now I can go ahead and cross multiply. So I now have 40A, not A, 40, 40A equals 750. Um, when I go ahead and divide by 40, I'm going to get 18.75. All right, I want you guys to go ahead and try 3 and 4. They're set up very similar to 1 and 2, so go ahead and try 3 and 4. I'm going to pause the video, and I'll show you the solution. All right, here is three and four. Once again, I highlighted it for us. We have x over 10, six over eight, and then over here on the right, x six over 12 is equal to y over 14. All right, let's go ahead and do the second guided exploration. So first, we wanna consider the diagram below, which has two similar triangles by angle-angle similarity. So we've already talked about how we know that these angles are congruent to one another because they are corresponding angles with those parallel lines. All right, let's find the scale factor of ABC to AED. So we can do a couple different things. We have a couple things in front of us. Um, so ABC would be the smaller triangle, so I could do something like 4 over 6, right, because that's the entire side of my other triangle. Or we can do 6 over 9. Or I also have the option to do 8 over 12. Any of these options would work as they are all corresponding parts. Um, and they should all give us the same proportion. So let's go ahead and do 8 over 12. Do those parallel lines again. So 8 over 12, that simplifies to 2 over 3. So there's my scale factor for ABC to AED. All right, now let's find the lengths of CD and BE. So I'm going to go ahead and re-highlight this real quick. So AC, or sorry, not AC, CD here, we want to find the length of that, and we also want to find the length of BE. So if we notice, we have the entire thing, and then we have part of that. So, um, and I want to say it's unit one, maybe we talked a lot about part, plus part will give us the whole thing. So I have AC plus CD will give me AD. So AC is four, I'm trying to find CD, and AD is 6. So I end up getting CD equals 2. Then I can go ahead and do the same thing with the other side. So I have AB plus BE should equal AE. So AB is 6. I'm trying to find BE. And AE is 9. So when I go and find BE, I have all right, then it wants us to find the, purport, the ratio of AC over CD and AB over BE. What do we notice? Um, so let me unfill this in so we have it written down. Two, three, and this is a really prime example of why you shouldn't necessarily use your image to guess the sizes of things because it's not always drawn to scale because um, the top triangle does not look bigger than the smaller part of the larger triangle. All right, so AC is four. CD is 2, and that will equal 2. There's the ratio. And then AB is 6 over BE is 3, which is 2. So those are the ratios of each of those. What do we notice? Well, I notice they are the same. All right, and then let's go ahead and find the ratio of BC over DE, which is 8 over 12. And that's actually what we did earlier. Not on purpose, the same thing, but... That's what we did over, we got two over three. Is the answer the same as part C or for part A? And it's definitely the same for part
part A. And if we want to double check that and you're like, oh, well, it's the same numbers, well, we can do 4 over 6, which will also give me 2 over 3. So even if we use a different set of numbers, we have those different parts. Those are different ratios. All right, let's go and talk about that a little bit. So that we have the triangle proportionality theorem. If a triangle has two sides, so these two sides it's talking about, intersect by a parallel line to the third side, so parallel line with the third side of the triangle, then the intersected sides are split into proportional parts. It is split into two into proportional parts. So AD and DB as well as AE and EC. So like we were working with um, that guided example up there when we figured out all those parts. Note the parallel sides are not proportional to these parts. The parallel sides are proportional to the scale factor of the similar triangle, which is not the same ratio. So we have to realize we're dealing with parts right now. So when we're dealing with parts of a triangle, we can't deal with whole sides of the triangle. So DE, my blue highlighted parts in BC, are whole sides of the triangle. They are not cut in parts. But AD and DB, that is parts of the larger triangle. So we use parts and we can use the proportionality theorem. All right, let's try a couple examples. So example five, find the missing variable. I like to just take this parallel line and just draw a line over it, and now I have two sets of fractions. I have 6 over x equals 8 over 5. Alright, so now I have 8x is equal to 30 divided by 8, I get 3.75. Okay, so it's very similar to the same where we still do the cross multiplication, we're just setting it up a little bit differently. We're not taking one whole side over the other whole side of the other triangle, I'm just taking parts of this of the larger side. All right, so you can do the same thing over here. I can cut this in half, and so now I kind of have two fractions. And for this, it doesn't matter what order. If we did x minus two over x plus three, or the other way around, as long as we take the bottom parts over, and then we take the top parts. So you keep those parts on the same side, whether it's the top or the bottom. And now we can cross multiply. So I have 8 times x minus 2 is equal to 5 over x plus 3. So now we can distribute 8x minus 16 equals 5x plus 15. So we end up with 3x is equal to 31. x equals 31 over 3. So I couldn't simplify that. My decimal would be super long. Alright, so go ahead and try 7 and 8 and do the same process. Draw that line across that middle parallel line and now you've created those two fractions. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at 7 and 8. So there are the solutions. See, I do that line down the center and then I have um, those two fractions that I was able to set up for myself. All right, now with 9, 10, and 11, we're supposed to find all the variables, of course. So we can go ahead and start with creating our fraction down the center like we have been. So I have five, or sorry, not five. Let's do x over five is equal to three over three. So now I have three x equals 15 to give me x equals five. All right, wonderful. Now, as you can see, we now have to find y. So you might be thinking, oh, well, y and 4 match up. Yep, that's, a, that's exactly correct. So let's go ahead and start with that. So y over 4. So I have my larger triangle on top of my smaller triangle. Now, these are whole sides. So I cannot take something like 3 and 3 because those are parts of a side. Yes, 3 is one side of the triangle, but 3 is not part of a triangle. We can imagine the shape right here. This is not a triangle, and so 3 is not a side of a triangle. The 3 down on the bottom. I know the numbers are repeating themselves. All right, so what this means is I'm going to take 
I have my small triangle, and then I have my large triangle. So I have large over small. This entire side equals 6. So I now have 6 over 3, because I have my large over my small. So now I have 3y is equal to 24, so y equals 8. Alright, so when we're not taking parts of sides and I'm taking a whole side, I have to continue to do whole sides with my other proportion. Alright, let's go ahead and try that again with number 10. So we can go ahead and cut this here so we can find a, not over here, so I can do 2 over a is equal to, oh, there's nothing over here, but I do know this entire side is 10. So if I subtract 7 from 10, this should be 3. So 3 plus 7 will give me that 10. So 2 over a is equal to 3 over 7. So 3a equals 14. a equals 14 over 3. All right, now we need to find B, so B is a whole side. I'm going to find this whole side that matches, which is the bottom of my big triangle. So I now have B over 11, which is equal to, we're going to take, we have a small side of the triangle, and then we have the large side of the triangle. So remember, we are taking parts of this. I need to take whole sides of triangles. So I can now do 7 over 10. And then for this one, I do the small triangle over the large triangle. So it doesn't matter if you do large over small or small over large. As long as you keep the same triangles on the top and the same triangle on the bottom, and you don't put those around. Alright, so now I have 10B is equal to 77. That's I cross multiply. And so B equals 7.7. .7. So now that we have learned about proportional, that we can just cut it in the middle there for the larger triangle, when it comes to finding whole sides of triangles, we need to remember to use the whole side of the large one and the whole side of the small one. We cannot use parts. Alright, and go ahead and try number 11, and we're trying to find D and E. There is that for you. So I drew my line down the middle. So I have 5 over 4 and D over 3. I was able to find E. And then I did 7 over E, which is equal to 5 over 9. And if you need to, I didn't write it in this one. You can write out the whole thing. And so it helps you out so you can really see that, oh, this whole side is 9. The whole side is a 4. The whole side is 9. All right. And that's the end of 6.4 and the end of chapter 6. So make sure if you have any questions, feel free to watch the video as needed and ask the teacher if you have any questions. Have a wonderful day.